What's going on, everybody? It's Master Fi, co-founder of HipHopSuccess.tv, here with my third episode of my new show, uh, Value and All. And the show that I've created is essentially a platform where I showcase people who are involved either within hip hop culture or just fans of hip hop culture. But through hip hop, they get some sort of positive motivation and pushes them forward to do impactful work, whether it's in their communities or the industries that they work in. And my special guest today is uh, Kyle Scott. He is the owner and director of Canyon View Media. And I chopped it up with this brother a couple of years ago. We've been keeping in touch ever since. He's a good friend of uh, my fiance. And seeing the work he does with video and the types of organizations he represents, as well as creators that he does video for, uh, was just mind blowing. And we had some really interesting discussions talking about video and the significant role of it with this world that is uh, technologically evolving all the time. So I wanted to bring him on and chop it up with him on the show, Value and All. So without further ado, I'm gonna bring him in and let's get it. Kyle, what is going on? Man, how's it going, bro? Good it's to good. see you. It's good, it's good, man. So you out in the Philippines right now? Yeah, man, out in the Philippines, uh, working on a really fun project. Uh, we're dealing with sports around the world. So Philippines is our first stop. Okay. And uh, we'll, we'll be hitting up the globe with this particular show. That's awesome, man. That's awesome, man. So I want to thank you first for hopping on my show for a little bit. I know you're a busy man. You're always on tour all over the world and everything. <laughs> so finally got a chance to lock you down and chop it up with you for a little bit, man. So uh, without wasting any time, man, uh, tell the audience who you are and what is uh, Canyon, Canyon View Media. Okay, cool, man. Well, as you guys may have heard, my name is Kyle Scott. I'm a I'm an Atlanta native, and uh, I grew up on the south side of Atlanta, southwest side of Atlanta, and uh, went to uh, Grady High School, studied at Clark Atlanta University, uh, did the whole you know SWAT living, if you will. Uh, my mom, single parent, you know, did her thing, make sure I had, uh, you know, make sure I had everything I needed, you know, to succeed as a child and. Uh, believe it or not, I wanted to be a pilot. I want. I started out wanting to be a pilot, man. And and my middle school teacher told me that I sucked at math and that I shouldn't even think about doing it, you know. And and sadly enough, I ran away from it. I'm still a fan mm -hmm. of planes. As a matter of fact, one of the projects I'm working on now is dealing directly with that. But um, went on to start kind of consulting with churches and uh, getting their media ministries up and going. Did that a lot on the East Coast, up in Baltimore and D.C. and, and uh, Leesburg, Virginia. Uh, did some stuff with the Department of Defense, Battlefield producer. Um, uh, came back home, took care of mom as she got sick, and uh, began to kind of start doing some consulting in Atlanta and decided to open up my own company, which is Canyon View Media. And the, a lot of people say, well, why Canyon View Media? You know, why would you get that name? Every year, I, I actually asked you that question when I first met you, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I went out to the Grand Canyon for the first time many, many years ago, and I was just like in awe. I mean, I saw it, pictures really don't do it justice. You know, it's just it's amazing. And so I go there every year, at least like three or four times a year now. It's kind of like my little, you know, my little Zen place. I just kind of sit there and and chill out and kind of just let God speak. But you know, I, I just I just decided to name it Canyon View Media because I was just in awe uh, with with the the experience there at the Grand Canyon, and so I want my clients to be in awe of the type of projects we do for them. I like that, and I like the way you tie that in in awe. Sure. You know, yeah. and I've seen your work, man. You we're gonna get into all that real quick too. Uh, you do excellent work, man. You know, the Thank website you, looks fantastic. Uh, if you guys haven't been to CanyonViewMedia.com, definitely check it out. This man, Kyle Scott's doing some very amazing things around the world, not just domestically. OK, so my my uh, essentially my second question is like, what inspired you to get into directing film and video? Like, like, you know, who 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 or what got you into making these kind of moves and being your own boss doing this kind of work? It started out very early, right when the teacher told me 
you're too dumb to be a pilot. <laughs> then I started getting to this video thing. I went to the school named Bunch Middle School, which is in uh, Southwest Atlanta. And they had a, uh, I guess you would call it a magnet program for video broadcast. And mm -hmm. literally I started just studying video production as a middle schooler. And they had this phenomenal program called Kids Witness News that was uh, sponsored by Panasonic. And some little black kids from the Swats in Atlanta you know, entered this national contest and won best in the country. And by that time, I was like, wow, you might be pretty good at this. You know, okay. so I, I went to Grady High School, which is in Midtown Atlanta. And we had a, uh, a magnet program for broadcast journalism there as well. Really unique program, man. This teacher, uh, his name is Thaddeus Roberts, man. He was a young guy at the time. He was just energetic and he just let us do what we want to do and, and literally learn on ourselves. And I really uh, realized that I had uh, some real talent when I started doing like investigative stories. I thought I was gonna be an investigative reporter, man. And but did you um, wanna be like an anchor person, like an anchor man? Yes, I was an anchor. <laughs> I was an anchor, man. I was an anchor in high school. I was an anchor at Clark Atlanta University. And my okay. hope was, you know, I, I wanted to do the expose stuff. I'm so glad I didn't do that, man. <laughs> you know, mad respect to the folks that do it. That's some hard work. I've got some great respect for those guys that work in those newsrooms. I got a lot of friends that are producers and, and uh, reporters across the, the country. And I mean, these guys have crazy schedules. They've got a lot of pressure on them. Uh, but I'm glad I didn't do it because I wouldn't be able to travel like I can now. Um, All over the world, man. I actually saw... Uh Recently, you spoke to that middle school, right? I saw some pictures. I don't know if it was yes. recently or a while back. I actually got some images I want to show everybody, too. Sure. But what was that experience like talking to the, the youth and essentially the future? What, what, what's it looking like? Man, it was surreal, man. Just to kind of be back at the place where it all started, you know, uh, it was it was pretty dynamic. I had a great time just kind of telling the kids that, you know, just go for it, you know, go for it. And don't let any teacher, and I said it right there in front of that teacher, <laughs> don't let any teacher tell you that you can't do something. Don't let your parents tell you that you can't do something. You go for it, you know, and uh, it was a great time, man, uh, just spending time with those kids and uh, being back at the place where it all started. Really enjoyed myself. That's awesome, man. And, and, and it's always good that even when you're making those kind of moves, especially like you going even international and, creating video like that for all these different businesses and, and organizations to go back and show, you know, students, you can do this too, you know, yeah. and it's, and it actually does a lot for you too. It keeps you going too. It's, it's like, it's like a mutual transaction. They're getting oh, yeah. value, but you're getting it too, you know? Absolutely, man. And the kids, they light up, you know, and I just do little small stuff. Like I bring a camera, like I bring a cinematic camera, I bring some lights, and they, and just they wanna, love that. They go crazy for that, man. They, yeah, man. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I hope to do a lot more of that, man. Yeah, those kids, they had a great time. They had a great time. And believe it or not, some of them asked me for my business cards. Oh, really? I gave it to them, and they reached out to me. They they send emails, and they That's reach awesome. out to me. And I respond, and they say, hey, where are you now? And I say, I'm here. You know, I send them a picture. And, you know, so they follow me on, on Instagram as well. Oh, you know, they all on the ground, man. You know, what I mean? oh, yeah. they, they all they all hooked into the social media. So, you know, they're oh, going to yeah. be popular, man. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, uh, going through all the various projects that you've done, like, like, what are some of your favorite projects you've done? And then also, what were some of your favorite locations that you've shot at? Wow. I know um, there's a lot. I know there's a lot. Well, I'm just <laughs> the, 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 there's a couple. But, you know, I can say that. Uh, I produced a show, directed the show uh, called Travel and Truth. Uh, and it's, it's basically, it's hip hop's take on Africa. It's okay. incredible. And so um, if you've seen like a Anthony Bourdain, you know, he's got his style. Well, well this, uh, yeah, exactly. You know, but uh, Taste, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Travel and Truth is just, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, it's, it's amazing. So we shot that in Ghana. West Africa mm -hmm. uh, uh, last year, man, I, and just the the culture, the 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 way you feel like you're at home, and how people welcome you, man, it's just it's just not a feeling like that. And just the culture that you learn, and to see the slave castles, and to actually be documenting this stuff, and and the the surprising thing is how appreciative the locals are that you come to document history, you know. 
And so uh, I had a great time with that. I go to Barbados a lot. It's one of my favorite places. I, I do a ton of work down there. Yeah. yeah, man, it's beautiful. The people are great. Uh, we shoot a lot down in Barbados. And, and uh, believe it or not, Barbados is very significant to me because um, it is the place where I first got the travel bug. You really? know, I started. Really? Yes, yeah, it's, it's the first place that I was like, "Oh, I can do this," and I saw tremendous opportunity in Barbados uh, because there wasn't a lot of guys doing like high quality video production. You had some really talented folks out there, but it's sad to say that the opportunities just weren't there. And I was like, "Well, let me just get my foot in the door." And right. literally, once that happened, man, I, the phone started ringing like crazy. And I was like, "Well, this this travel and adventure stuff is okay," you know. Uh, and I just started, great, man. Yeah, man, it, it was, it was amazing. So Barbados is a really special place to me. I go there all the time. I'm shooting there all the time and I've gotten, uh, to get, I've gotten to know some really great folks there. I got a lot of friends in Barbados now okay. and kind of all throughout the Caribbean. So Grenada, Barbados, St. Lucia, but Barbados is my spot. Like that's, that's, that's a very special place to me. I feel it, man. Yeah. I mean, I haven't even been to Barbados, the only island I, I'm actually half Haitian. I've only been to Jamaica, so I, I got a lot of islands I got to catch up on. You got to get down there, man. Flights are cheap now, man. <laughs> I feel it, man. We might have to roll sometime with uh, Alex, man. <laughs> hey, man, and, and y'all can come to me to Barbados, man. I'd love to show you around. No doubt, no doubt, man. I'm a, I'm a local there now. Or at least I feel like I'm a local. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I get there. I know all the radio DJs. I know like the folks in the government now, and you know, I know the whole island. So I hop in the car and I just go. You know. And man, so it's yeah, a lot we, of we definitely going link, man. Yeah, so let's do it. Doing the work you do, man, like innovation with technology is evolving so fast. So you being in the industry of video and film, how do you adjust to the rapid pace of innovation, especially with video, man, like 4K. I mean, I don't even know. You might even know what's next. I don't know what's next. But for all our, you know, videographers and vloggers and hip hop artists and, and everybody that's engaged with the culture and have anything to do with media, like what kind of, you know, what kind of hurdles do you have to go through or even just like how hard is it to keep up with the pace with technology evolving so fast as a director? Well, the good thing about technology is it's getting cheaper. You know, OK, uh, uh, you know, there are some really ridiculous, expensive cameras like there's the red epic helium, the, you know, 8K. But there aren't even 8K TVs yet. So sometimes I, I didn't even heard of 8K. That's the first time yeah. I even heard about it. <laughs> so so anytime you take an 8K image, you know, you've got to down convert it to 4K or maybe 6K. But uh the technology is so now that there are some very really high quality small what we call dslr compact cameras now with the types of productions that i've been doing some of the clients want us to use these big 50 60 000 cameras you know the red epics and, and that's that's a good example right there that's the red epic that we're shooting down in barbados uh, it's a beautiful shot, man. Damn. yeah man this is we had we had a blast doing that video um, you know, but the cameras, as a matter of fact, where's this thing at? I have got this is too far away, but I was going to show you this you know, the small little gimbals now. I've got this Osmo, I've got this uh camera, it's like a five, it's a it's called an X5, and we're using it down here in Southeast Asia, you know. But it's 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 affordable, you know, which means that um, the opportunities are opening up for young filmmakers to just go save some money get your stuff and get to shooting, you know? And even yeah. the software, man, before, I remember when I first got in this thing, a, a, a suite called Final Cut Pro, uh, which is one of the standards of editing, the whole suite costs $2,500, you know? Uh, just, to get, just to get your foot in the door to press cut, you know? Now, <laughs> you know, uh, Adobe's got student uh, subscription for $19.99 a month, you know, where you can, have all the tools at hand, you know? So I think that the, the innovation of technology is a positive thing for new filmmakers because you can get your hands on the stuff quick and uh, quality. See, you used to be able to charge a lot for quality, but now quality is- It's is, everywhere. Is, well, it's everywhere, you now know? Now it's what you're doing. It's not what you're using anymore. It's the content now. It's not how right. good it looks. Uh, it, because if you, if you shoot stuff and it just don't look good, then no one's just going to use your point blank. Now it's what they want to see your, your actual skill set, your actual talent, you know? So it's, uh, 
it is a um, it's a good thing. I love the new technology. And so uh, the other thing that it does is it makes you not need to purchase a hundred dollar, a hundred thousand dollar camera. You know, like why purchase right. it when next year there's going to be something greater out, you know, like a cell phone, uh, like a cell phone. Exactly. Matter of fact, down here in the Philippines, um, this this Osmo, I wish I could show it to you. Uh, this Osmo, it matter of fact, I'm I'm just gonna grab it, okay? Let me just grab yeah, it. Yeah, go ahead, bro. I'm gonna just grab it for you so you can see it. This man got the tools, man. You should see his trunk. It's crazy. Let me just uh put my headphones back on here. This Osmo here, the camera itself costs about twenty six hundred dollars, but you know if you see the stabilization, used to. People used to have to have these big uh, steady cam. Matter of fact, the picture that you show with the um, what I sell on the beach, you know, that's mm -hmm. one of my cinematographers, Jake, and he's got this big old steady cam rig. That rig itself costs twenty five thousand dollars. You know, then you put the camera on it, got to wear it. This, you, you see the whole. He's got a vest on, and you know, to be able to get those stable shots. Now, with the press of a button, man, you 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 turn this thing on, and the camera just stabilizes, man. We, I can walk, I can run with it. Yeah, you know, so this is the type of technology that uh, that is available nowadays, and, and filmmakers are are really taking the part of of getting it. Man, that is awesome. That's some great game, man. For all the uh, videographers out there, anybody in any kind of video, man, definitely follow this man. Uh, you can follow him on IG at K Scott Directs. Also follow Canyon View Media at Canyon View Media on IG. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, my next question is, uh, you know, do you have a mentor of any kind? You know, uh, do, 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 is there anybody that you look up to that you kind of are trying to follow? Or is there anybody you're currently talking to that's kind of giving you some guidance to maneuver through this industry? Yeah, I've got a couple of mentors and I've had a couple of mentors. Uh, my father passed when I was two years old. And so one of the uh, things my mom always made sure is that I had like positive male figures. Well, now, you know, I strategically get these guys that can steer me in the right direction within the industry I'm in. Uh, one of my big mentors and a, a, a friend, frankly, his name is Ozzy Aru. Uh, mm -hmm. Ozzy Aru is the uh, president of Tyler Perry Studios. He actually just stepped down and now his wow. brother Will. Will Aru is the uh, president of Tyler Perry Studios. But Ozzy Aru, man, great guy and just gives it to me like it is. You know, uh, we traveled together. Uh, he showed me around. He's given me some some awesome uh, advice, and he just tells it like it is. And the thing is, you want mentors that just give it to you straight. You know, not not the you know, oh, you can make it. No, you need someone to say, listen, nothing's going to happen if you keep on doing that. You know. Hello. Um, and so, a lot of people just want encouragement, but you want folks to tell you the truth. Uh, one of my mentors as a high school uh, student. His name is Milton Clipper. Milton Clipper uh, at the time was the president of uh, WABE and uh, basically PBS Atlanta, you know, mm -hmm. and he just, you know, during the summertime, folks were at summer camp. I was at the television station, you know, uh, just kind of learning, you know, hanging out with the guys, you know. Uh, and so he taught me so much, man. He taught me so much. I can remember one of the big things that he taught me was, uh, you know, when you get a contact, you follow up with those people. I mean, this is very simple, very simple. When I was in high school, he introduced me to George Lucas, which was his Whoa. friend. George Lucas, there was the Atlanta Thrashers. The Atlanta Thrashers was a hockey team we had. And uh, Mr. Clipper took me up into the little VIP booth, George Lucas and a couple other big wigs up there. George Lucas gives me his information. And I look because he wanted to invite me out to the ranch out in, in, in on the West Coast. And a week later, I never followed up. I lost the information. <laughs> and I hit I hit Mr. Clipper up. I said, hey, Mr. Clipper, um, do you think you can uh, hook me up with George Lucas again? Like I lost the information. He said, no, nope. like, no, nope. no. Nope. I told you <laughs> he said he said, I told you to keep up with the information and to reach out to him. And he taught me to this day. He never gave me his information. You know, uh, it's George Lucas, man. Like, how could you lose that information? <laughs> and second of all, how could you not follow up? But that's what happens when you don't know the value of the people that you're talking to. Right. You know, and that's what 2001, 
You know what I mean? If you don't know the value that of the folks that you're talking to, which you should value everybody because you'd never know how, you know, instrumental they'll be in your lives, you know? You. And so, uh, and you'd be blown away at the types of projects. Now that I, I've learned that lesson, but the types of projects that I've gotten just on valuing somebody that looks like nobody, you know, I can remember there was an opportunity um, just a couple of months ago. Um, I was in Atlanta at the Pont City Market. There's a um, there's a Whole Foods in that area. I was sitting there talking to this young lady. She's like, a, I saw her doing some design stuff. We just started chatting or whatever. And she asked what I did and we were conversing. And she's like, hey, man, um, what kind of work you do? And, and I showed her my work. She said, whoa, what, is this Barbados? I said, yeah. So, oh, cool. I'm, I'm working for this guy now. And he, um, you know, he's he's starting a medical school in Barbados. I was like, OK, cool. I'm actually going there next week. Really? We need a video done. You know, one of my largest contracts happened in 10 minutes of just me valuing this little girl that looked like she could be, you know, just a student. You know, here she is. Put me in contact with a multimillionaire. We met the very next day. He gave me like a 75 uh, percent deposit the following day. I was well, you know you weren't playing games. <laughs> you weren't playing games. He's like, oh, yeah. And I was like, man, well, you know, let's put the contract together. No, no, don't worry about the contract. I trust you. You know, and like, you know, it was nothing. And I said, okay, well, you know, it, it, it was nothing. And he said, I, I've seen your work and so forth and so on. And folks down there know you. So go down there and, and do what you do. And we did a a, a a fantastic project down in Barbados, man. Uh, uh, but, and just based off the conversation, and that's one thing I encourage people to do, man. Just don't be afraid to converse with people. One of the big things I, I said this year is that I've got to get into the feature film world this year. So okay. I made it my point. I made it my point to be at the Sundance Film Festival this past January. So I went out there. I went out there by myself, and it was last minute. But I went out there, and I had an opportunity to sit with people like Issa Rae, I sit with people like Idris Elba. And I just kind of made you got and it's kind of like you got to have that the audacity just to go for it and just be bold. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, but uh, you have to have the audacity just to go for it. And I'm telling you, I've made up my mind that I'm going to be doing feature films by the end of this year. And we are in uh, pre-production right now for my first feature. Uh, it's called Deported. And so y'all will hear about that real soon. Uh, and, hey, it, but, and, and, and exclusive and, nugget, man. That's what's yeah, up, man. And, and believe it or not, it's tied into Ghana. The fact and the the thing that the thing that um uh inspired me about deported was that I had already been to Ghana, and I said, man, this would be a great story to to so forth. So so I tied it. We'll shoot a week in L.A. and we'll shoot we'll shoot four weeks in Ghana. You know, and that that'll be coming up real soon. And it's a feature. It's amazing. It's going to be a, a a box office release, you know, and uh, it's going to be a, a good project, man. And so the other thing that I, I realize is that when you speak things, man, they happen. Speak when life, you, man. My, my, speak my life. They tell me that all the time, man. Yeah, speak life. And 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 a lot of times you have to speak it against the people that you love, the people that you respect, or sometimes look up to. You know, some people are in relationships that your spouse or your significant other won't even speak life to you. Don't even believe in you. Leave. Uh, run. <laughs> you know, I'm totally against divorce and all of that. I can tell you, though, if you go home to the same person every single night and they are telling you what kind of person that you're not, then you will certainly uh, accept that and begin to manifest that. I mean, you got to be around people that uh, support you, that believe in you, that speak life to you, and that will stand with you, you know, as you're uh, going through your matriculation in life, man. So um, I spoke that this year. Uh, my partner, Marjan Santos, who is, he's actually downstairs waiting on me now because we got a, a, a production in a few minutes here in the Philippines. But mm -hmm. Marjan Santos and I, we said, listen, this year, we're going to do our first major feature. And we're we're in pre-production, you know, and so you speak that stuff, man. Things start happening. Man, I I really appreciate that story, man. That was real powerful. A lot of jewels in there, man. You ain't got some relationship advice if y'all ain't listening. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what's up, man. Hey, man. Um, I know you got to get going and everything. Um, I know we can. Uh, 
I, I real quick though, I got one. Can I ask one more question, real yeah, quick? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, the fact because it ties right in. We had that conversation about the opportunities internationally, but specifically in Africa. And now you're doing a full length feature of a story either having to do with Ghana or in Ghana. Explain to the audience for, you know, my last piece and uh, your last comment, like the magnitude of opportunities that people need to tap into in the continent of Africa and expanding, not just domestically, but understanding the magnitude of what's happening out there. Break that down. Well, for me personally, um, I'll, 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 I'll start saying about Africa, start talking about Africa. For me personally, I saw tremendous opportunity in Africa because Africa is not what CNN reports. Africa is not what these uh, international news networks report. Everybody does not have Ebola. You know, Boko Haram is not going to come and get you. Africa is beautiful. And frankly, I feel safer walking downtown Accra, Ghana, than I do walking West End Atlanta at night. I walk oh. downtown Ghana and, and Accra, the, the capital of Ghana, before I walk downtown West End in, <laughs> in the middle of the night. You know, and it's there's a safety there. And, and frankly, there's problem everywhere you go in the world. But um, there's tremendous opportunity in business. And Ghana is one of the fastest growing economies in all of Africa. You know, and so that means that production companies, you know, could, could open up there. Uh, that means that, you know, restaurants and hotel folks, you know, could come there. And, but the, the crazy thing about it, though, is uh, the reason I saw opportunity person in Africa is because I realized that a lot of the production houses in Africa in West Africa in particular, they'll either come from Holland, Amsterdam, or they'll bring them up from South Africa. These are not African uh, brothers or sisters, or, or these are not. These are people that have come from England and set up shop in these countries. But people got super excited when they saw my production company in West Africa, and so I actually have a producing partner in Ghana now. His name is Tony Fuwa. He's probably uh, going to be checking in right now uh, in a few. But his name is Tony Fuwa, and he. Uh, He's been connecting us, you know, like tremendously down in West Africa. So I know for a fact that we will be doing a ton of work in West Africa in the upcoming year. Uh, and so the, the thing about the reason I chose international uh, travel and adventure is because uh, there are cities like Atlanta that are just really oversaturated with film production. You go to Atlanta right now. I mean, every corner, there's a production house, there's a production truck. And people say, oh, that's a great. No, it's not great necessarily for folks like myself because the production folks are the same people that are coming from L.A. They're just making more money in Atlanta now because of the tax incentives that are there oh. and because of the multiple uh, opportunities for production there. So I saw as a production company, make your money outside the country, you know. You because, told me that when I first met you, man, it kind of blew my mind. Like, yeah, I understand, but with the way the magnitude of it, you're like, there are businesses out there that have money now, but they just don't have the technology or the specialists to get their content or their service, a commercial to get some, so they're willing to pay. And it's all over the continent, specifically Ghana, because that's what you were really talking oh, about. Yeah, absolutely, It was really like opening my mind, like even more than it already is. You know? There are mega ad agencies in Ghana, mega ad agencies that have offices there, but that are based in Europe. So what happens is they call their boys up in, in England and they say, hey, we got this commercial down for this company. Bring your boys down, you know. Uh, and so these guys are coming from London. They're coming from Amsterdam uh, or either they're coming from uh, you know, South Africa. And, uh, you know, but there are just tremendous opportunities for black folks to do business wherever you're from in Hello. Ghana. And they welcome you. You know, if, if you have your stuff together and, and you know how to uh, present yourself professionally, they welcome you. They are excited that you are wanting to do business in there. Uh, one of my very good friends now, I spent time with her about three weeks ago in London. Her name is Ama K. Abrebrese, and she is uh, she's a Ghanaian actress. Uh, she lives in London. She's back and forth. Uh, and she's a producer on this project, Deported. She's actually... 
a producer and one of the leading uh, roles in Deported. She's big out. She's like the Holly Berry of West Africa. She's like the face of Lario. I mean, but if you approach these people, what I found, if you approach them with some real significant stuff, they will give you an opportunity to work with them. And so, you know, that's that's just my takeaway. If you sit back and say, because I listen, I've had plenty of people say, "Man, why would you want to do that stuff overseas? Man, those folks are not gonna fool with you. They're not gonna, you know." And here I am, all around Southeast Asia filming. You know what I mean? Uh, so I just say, go for it, man. I encourage people to uh, go against the grain. You know, go against the folks that are speaking negatively of you, uh, and just make stuff happen, man. This is the opportunities are out there but they're not going to come to you. They're not going to fall in your lap. You just got to go hard for it. And you got to create your own door because there are people that are waiting. There are people that are waiting on doors to be open for them. They may never open by somebody else. You got to go build your own door. One of my guys that I really respect, uh, his that, name is- That was a, man, you got to build your own door. I like build that. Your own door. Don't wait for it to open because that door may never open, man. You got to go build your own door. And walk through it, and that's what my team we've done. We walk through it. Uh, uh, you know, uh, just connect yourself with great people, man. What's up, Alex? <laughs> just connect yourself with great people. Uh, uh, a, a great writer uh, that we're working with. She's a part of the Canview Media team, man. Her name is Candace Richardson. You know, uh, she is a beast. God, she's a beast. And some of the people that you need in your life are not people that are big yet. There are people that are growing just like you are. So never despise people because you may not see some mega, mega things that have come from them already. Some of the people that you, some of your connectors are literally people that will grow with you. You know what I mean? And I thank God for Candace Richardson, Marjan Santos, uh, Sasha Venord, you know, Tony Fua. Uh, Give them the uh, shout outs, man. Hey, hey you know, I, it's all yeah. good. Shout them all out, you bro. know, I'm, I'm okay. I've embraced it, you know, uh, just the whole Canyon View Media team. These are people that believe in me and that have believed in me and have stood by me through tough times. You know, when we first started and when I first started Canyon View Media, man, it, was, it wasn't all gravy. It wasn't gravy. It was tough. But you had to build your relationships up, build your networks up. And now, man, we're rocking. We're rocking and rolling. Man, that, it, that's real inspiring, man. Because even us, you know, with Hip Hop Success, we're a startup, too. And, you know, one of the co-founders for our company, uh, Coach Tony Brace, he's actually watching right now. He always tells us, man, there's there's people out in the world who need our co our, our platform and they don't even yeah. know us yet. They don't even know us yet. So you yeah. got to yeah. keep going. You know what I mean? You don't and, know and, who you're going to run into. Yeah. And kudos to you, brother, for doing your thing, man. Uh yeah, hey, I've always had that, the utmost man. of respect. And we talked about and look, you're a living testimony. We talked about this, you know, and now you're doing it, man. And so congrats to you, man, and all that you're doing, your beautiful fiance. You know, I your brother with Jordan. Man. I I, I, I'm, I'm just excited for you, man. And uh much success to you and the family. Hey, I appreciate that, man. So hey, uh Kyle, I'm not gonna take any more of your time. I know you gotta get to the set, you in the Philippines, and then you're probably going to Rome or Milan or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know, man. But guys, uh please follow this man on IG to keep up with his moves. Uh K Scott Directs. That's his IG. Also follow his company, Canyon View Media on Instagram. Uh Kyle, is there anywhere else that they can find you or your company? Uh, my can my uh, website for Canyon View Media is canyonviewmedia.com. And so if okay. you want to kind of check out some of the work we've done, uh, canyonviewmedia.com forward slash film. You'll see our reel there. And uh, you can travel with us. Uh, you know, just follow my IG at K Scott Directs. But, uh, you know, uh, you can travel with us, man. And 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 uh, we, we, we got some stuff planned. So. It's funny you mentioned Milan. Milan is coming up very shortly. <laughs> yeah, you see what I, I just picked that up out of, out of the hat, man. You know, so Kyle, I already know I'm going. You're going to be a, a, a another feature guest later down the road, man, with a little bit more content and and more news, man. So I really appreciate you joining me, even though with your uh, busy schedule, man. Uh, you know, take care and be safe out there, bro. And then we're gonna chop it up soon, all right? Yes, sir, man. Appreciate it, man. All the best to you. All right, homie. I'm gonna holla at you. Yes, Peace. sir. Take care. So again, guys, uh, wrapping up episode three, 
of value and all special guests kyle scott i'm telling you amazing brother right there young brother doing big things in the video and film world if you want to connect with them definitely find them on ig uh, please share this video with anybody in your network or family that does film or video or wants to get into it i think this uh segment and interview will be very valuable to them uh also anybody in the hip-hop culture that wants to work with him i mean he's he does rap videos he does hip-hop videos uh, dance videos and this man does it all so definitely check out his reel on canyonviewmedia.com again want to thank everybody my audience for tuning in today the hip-hop success.tv community the value and all where i showcase people and fans of hip-hop culture who are doing positive things in their communities and or industries that they work in. Uh, I'll be back soon with another episode of Value and All with somebody else. I got a couple people lined up, really excited to bring on. So thanks guys for tuning in, share, like, comment with your family and friends, and I'll talk to y'all soon, all right? Peace.